In the studio today is T.S. Monk, the son of legendary Thelonious Monk, along with Reed Hadley, the founder of Jazz Backstage, and one of his students, Ethan Reed. Welcome to all of you jazz men. Ethan, I include you in that. We're going to start with you, Mr. Monk. Sure. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Um, look, Thelonious Monk, that's all you have to say. And I think anybody can hear the rhythms, um, you know, yeah. in their mind. Why is it so important for you to, to keep his legacy alive and to, and to bring young people into that? Well, you know, for me, Thelonious uh, is an inspiration. I happen to be his son, but he was an, a, an incredible inspiration for me as a musician. And one of the things that Thelonious, and in fact his entire generation of jazz musicians, uh, cared very much about all of the arts. Mm -hmm. We tend to sort of comp compartmentalize the arts, but they're actually all connected, connected. you know. And uh, I felt that if, if I had the opportunity in Thelonious name, you know, to inspire young people, be it musicians, mm -hmm. people in theater, the multimedia, whatever, I, I should utilize that because he would, he would really enjoy that. You know, Thelonious, uh, like Miles Davis, mm -hmm. uh, transcended jazz. There's a, uh, there's a, there's an ideology almost that goes with Thelonious Monk and, and people like Miles Davis and John Coltrane, those jazz musicians. It was about originality. It was about communication. It was about interactivity. Mm -hmm. And those are really tenets of Americanism, yeah. so to speak, and democracy. And so uh, I feel very, very fortunate that I've had the opportunity through the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz and now through what we're doing with uh, the family through the uh, Thelonious Monk Society for the Arts, uh, that it's, it's an honor to be able to interact with young people. We have so many young people that need guidance, so many young people that are super talented, that need resources, and uh, I have felt for quite a while now, we're in our 25th year at the, at the Monk Institute, mm -hmm. so I've felt for quite a while now that that's really, that's really what I should be doing. I was given so much you know one of the greatest drummers that ever lived a gentleman by the name of Max Roach <laughs> another one by the name of Art Blakey they gave me my first drums and gave me my drum lessons and Didn't you want to be able to and I want to give back okay. so I'm gonna bring you in Mr. Hadley um, because you are also helping in a way to preserve the legacy of all that rich music um, tell, why don't you explain to the audience basically it's, it's just as Mr. Monk has said it's a combination of giving back. For me as well, I grew up under a work-study program in high school, which got me involved through working at a television station, starting off in the mailroom and mm -hmm. then progressing and learning different aspects in terms of what it was like to work in news to as an assistant producer and then progress forward and seeing behind the scenes what it actually takes. Mm -hmm. In doing that, and also as a musician, not of this caliber, <laughs> but playing French horn for six years, mm -hmm. took me to another level, and I wanted to be a journalist. <laughs> and I figured the best way for me to do this after getting the degree, uh, I substitute taught mm -hmm. to help feed myself while I was working at night at a station and in the current events capacity as a mm -hmm. substitute teacher. What is current events? News. Mm -hmm. I taught the kids basically so, how to do okay. a news program in a grade school setting. Mm -hmm. It was sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And from that, after I left that school... But now you are teaching them in a way about music and a little bit of, 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 of filmmaking over... Exactly. Yeah. Film documentary production is the primary goal for, mm -hmm. for this particular group. Jarris Reed Group is uh, made up of individuals who are in the industry, Danny Glover in terms of theatrics uh, and movies, uh, Melvin Van Peoples, um, basically Robert Hooks are the three movie industry people who've endorsed this project. Mm -hmm. John Levy, 
a wonderful. Why don't you tell that? Because I don't want to use up all of our yes, time. Yes. I want to mm -hmm. tell the audience what it is that you guys are doing with the youngsters in order to not only keep the legacy of music mm -hmm. alive, but mm -hmm. also to introduce them to the arts and the possibilities for their own lives. Well, we were actually taking a workshop setting in film documentary production, and students like Ethan mm -hmm. were teaching them the aspects of uh, film documentary in front of the camera as well as behind the camera a production crew of five students, a group of 10 students all together. We have a young set from 13 to 16 and another group from 17 to 19. Okay. All aspects, music genres total across the board, movies, theater, and okay. record industry, journalism. So the list the can in, be endless. The industry movers and shakers, okay. we get them as our subjects and we let these guys loose on them. And Ethan, in fact, you interviewed Mr. Monk. Yes, I did. Tell me about that experience. What did you learn? Um, I've never, ever heard of Thelonious Monk mm -hmm. until now. And I honestly think he is a great musician. Oh, yes, um, he was. His father was very, he inspired many people, like musicians, to play piano. Because I listened to his music just last night in my bedroom. It was excellent. Mm -hmm. I was dancing to it at a very awesome beat. I love it. I honestly think that kids around the United States should learn about this kind of music. A lot of kids listen to pop, rock, and rap, but they should focus on jazz. I mean, jazz is like the history of Harlem. I mean, I mean my grandpa owns Lanx Lounge. Yes. They have a jazz, um, jazz background over there. He teaches me a lot about jazz history, and I love it. Um, I can never get enough. And so in, in interviewing him, you not only found out about the music, but you're curious even about my job. Do you think this filmmaking, this interviewing, is something that you'd like to do and maybe eventually teach others? Like Hadley did. I mean, he went to college for this, high school. It took a lot of time. I think that I want to be a journalist. I think that maybe it could work. I mean, it is a fun experience just doing this and having fun. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just, interesting. You're just learning. learning about jazz, learning about different cultures and music. It's something that you could get every day, but I don't get it where I live in New Jersey. But hey, the great thing about jazz is you kind of take it with you and carry it inside of yeah. you in a lot of ways. Mr. Monk, what do you think when you hear this 13-year-old young man talk about dancing to the music, <laughs> loving the beat, wanting other uh, other youngsters to have the same opportunity, <laughs> the same appreciation and respect yeah. for it? I have to say that uh, Ethan is is quite a young man. He is He's, exceptional. Uh, I, I, I was speaking to him as we were walking into the studio. I said, Ethan, what do you think I was doing when I was 13 years old? <laughs> and he said, I don't know what. I said, nothing. <laughs> and he's so, so serious. Yes. And he has such clarity uh, uh, about his future. And to me, uh, that's, that's what we want to instill in all of our kids. I think that Ethan is well on his way to a wonderful career, be it photojournalism, mm -hmm. television, whatever he wants to pursue. And our goal is to instill that feeling in as many young people as possible. And in fact, Ethan himself is an inspiration to other kids. Yes, it, it, it's, it's very, very it's obvious. an inspiration exactly. to adults. Yes. I want to ask you real quickly sure. before we run out of time. Um, there, there is a, a show that really yes. is a sort of a tribute to your father's yes. work, an art yes. show. It's a, at a gallery in the East Village, I yes. believe. Yes, uh, we have a show right now uh, down on Third Street. Uh, at the Wilmer Jennings yeah. Gallery, <laughs> and what it is, uh, it's it's a it's the largest collection of African American art here in New York City in actually several decades. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some of the greatest artists uh, from all over the United States, some uh, from uh, international, from various countries, and Thelonious was the inspiration. Mm -hmm. We asked the artists, uh, uh, you know, show us your art inspired. By, by Thelonious Monk. The, his music, uh, his, his music, life, his, his life, life, all those things. And so, if someone were to come to the show, it's not about a, a, a bunch of portraits of Thelonious Monk. It's about how the music and how he impacted various artists in various various ways and I would encourage people to come down and see this exhibit because it's going to be running through December through December okay and uh, it's just extraordinary art I was I'm humbled by it and I know that my father is sort of smiling though 
he didn't believe he had the profound impact on people that he had. You know, a genius like Thelonious he was doing what he and others, too. yeah, they, they, they're not, he, he, he's, he was a very humble man. And he didn't understand. I used to often say, Dad, you know, I talked to somebody today, and they said they were, they were about to get divorced, but they put on your record, and, <laughs> you know, the guy and his wife said, oh, wow, this song, and the next thing you know, their, their marriage is, is cool. So uh, I would encourage people to come see this, because if, you want, if you're interested in African-American art, then this is a show for you. one should not miss. Thank you all for being with us this afternoon. I know we're out of time. That means... We'll have to have you back. I'd love to come back. <laughs> love to come back. Right. Bring Thank the other so Thank you very much for your yes. time. Okay. We'll be right back.